Hello there. We define phonology as the study of sound system in a language. We also define phonology as the branch of linguistics that deals with how sounds function in relation to each other in a language. In this e-lecture, I want to plunge a little bit deeper inside phonology. I want to shed light on the main phonological processes that exist in English language and other languages. Let's take this example of three students who were talking about days. One of the students said, it's windy. The second said, no, it's Thursday. In response, the third student said, I agree, so let's have a drink. What's wrong here? In fact, these students are English language learners. Each one of them has a phonological or linguistic background which is different from the other. In fact, what happened is the first student was not talking about days, but he was talking about the weather. He said, it's windy. He didn't say it's Wednesday. And the second student thought or misunderstood the first, and he thought he was talking about days. That's why he said it's Thursday. While the third one misunderstood the second, he thought that he said thirsty not Thursday. That's why he said, I agree, let's go and have a drink. All these misunderstandings result from a fact that each one of these students has a different set of sounds or linguistic repertoire or phonological system that is totally different from the other. Human speech is of fundamental concern to phonologists and linguists in general. A part of what we know when we know language is our knowledge of phonology, our knowledge of the sound system, our knowledge of how sounds are brought together in a speech. So one of the fundamental issue in phonology is the, the rules or the phonological processes that take place when we combine these sounds together in a speech. The relationship between the phonemic representation or the sounds, the abstract sounds that we have in our mind, and the phonetic representation, the pronunciation, what we say, is determined by certain phonological rules. These phonological rules come out from certain phonological processes. So what are these phonological processes? Before explaining what are these phonological processes, let's take this example. When we produce words, what we do actually is produce a certain sequence of morphemes. And we know that in each morpheme is combined by or produced by a sequence of sounds. So each morpheme, when it is added or combined to other morpheme, it undergoes a certain change. One morpheme can juxtapose with another morpheme because of certain different sounds that exist in each of the morphemes together. When morphemes are combined together to form words, some segments in some morphemes may juxtapose with other morphemes or other segments in other morphemes. Let's take this example. Electric, electrical, electricity, or fanatic, fanatical, fanaticism. The sound K in electric change to sound s in electricity because we added the mineralizer morpheme et but it didn't change when we added the adjectivizer morpheme o electric electrical but electricity same case for the second example the sound k in fanatic changes to fanat to sound s in fanaticism but it doesn't change when we change it to fanatical. The English phonological processes occur in two different levels, in a word level or in a phrase level. In a word level, it occurs when one morpheme is added to another morpheme. In this case, one segment will influence the other segment. In a phrase level, this is caused by certain syntactic factors. That we're going to see more examples on. English phonological processes 
can be divided into three major categories. We have assimilation processes, we have syllable structure processes, and we have neutralization. Assimilation processes describe changes in which a sound becomes similar to or is influenced by or neighboring sound of an utterance. Syllable structure processes describe those sounds or those sound changes that affect the structure of the syllable. Neutralization is a process whereby phonological distinctions are reduced in a particular environment. In assimilatory processes, one segment may take on features from another neighboring segment. One consonant may pick up features from another vowel, or a vowel can take on features of a consonant. A consonant may influence another consonant, or a vowel may influence another vowel. Getting back to the example of electric, electrical, electricity, fanatic, fanatical, fanaticism, here, this is a real example of consonant that assimilates the vowel or the features of a vowel. Here, we find that a vowel or a consonant k is changed to s because it's taking the features of the segment in the morpheme et. The first segment in the morpheme et is a vowel which is a spread high vowel e. And k is a back consonant. So k is changed to s, which is a front consonant, which is produced by raising the tip of the tongue to the alveolar ridge, to the front part of the mouth. While saying k exactly, the k is produced by raising back the back of the tongue to the back of the of the mouth so here they will juxtapose k juxtaposes with the vowel e so what happens the k assimilates the vowel features and changes to a set sound the same case for fanatic fanaticism and the same case for analogous analogy Common processes of this type of assimilation, we can mention two, liberalization and palatalization. In this language of Nyupu, which is an African or Western African language, as you can see in this example, the g sound is, can be changed or produced by liberalizing or palatalizing it. In this example, as you can see, g can be gi or it can be gu. So in palatalization, the tongue position of a front vowel is superimposed on, ad on the adjacent consonants. So the spread vowel e is affecting the g sound here and changes to gi. In liberalization, the lip position of a rounded vowel induces a secondary modification onto the consonant and this modification is the rounding of the g sound so instead of seeing g you pronounce it as gu so it's very common in russian language and in up the western african language where speakers they labelize and they palatalize the g sound another common process of assimilation is when a vowel assimilates consonants or takes the feature of a consonant. And here we can mention the example of nasalization. What is nasalization? Nasalization refers to when a feature of a consonant may be superimposed into a vowel. In this type, this kind of assimilation, the modification of vowel is usually allophonic. And here, the nasal vowel or nasal consonant affects the vowel and it makes it nasalized. We can take the example of see, seen, cat, can't. It is quite common for vowels to be phonetically nasalized when adjacent to a nasal consonant. So whenever a vowel is adjacent to another nasal consonant, it gets nasalized. Can, and, seen, damn, 
etc. Another common, common assimilatory process is devoicing. And here we can take the example of Chatino language spoken in Mexico. Look what happens to the unstressed vowel. Here features of a consonant may be superimposed onto a vowel. In this language, uh, in Chatino, unstressed vowels becomes voiceless between two voiceless consonants. If you look at the example of Tihi, T, Kino, Kisu, Suili, Sutwa, Nguta, and Kuta. So what happens here, vowels, because they are voiced, they get devoiced whenever they are between two voiceless consonants. Another common example in assimilation process is the one found in English. Exactly, a consonant affects or takes the feature of another consonant. And here we can take the example of the plural morpheme S or the past morpheme D. So one of the most widespread phenomena is for a consonant clusters to agree in voicing. And here we can take the example of English S and T are found after voiceless consonants while Z and D are found after voiced ones. You can see the examples here, cups, backed, pats, raced, but we say cabs, pads, bagged, raised, etc. The last example of assimilation process is taken from a Turkish language. In Turkish, we can find a vowel assimilates another vowel. And here, as you can see in this example, the vowel of one syllable may become more like the vowel of some other syllable. Look here for the word arm, which is kol. If you want to say my arm, you say kolon. Same thing for rose, which is gul. If you say my rose, you have to say gulum. So the added morpheme has one vowel that affects the first vowel in the first syllable and they become very similar finally if assimilation is about all the changes that occur when one sound is added to another sound assimilation can be divided into two major categories regret aggressive assimilation and progressive assimilation in regressive assimilation this occurs when the change of one sound into another one is influenced by the following sound. And here we can mention the example of indefinite, impossible, incomplete. In progressive assimilation, it occurs when this change of one sound into another one is influenced by a preceding sound. And here we can mention the, the plural morpheme S, like books and bags. Thank you for being faithful to our flipped phonological courses. Please stay tuned for more coming videos.